Hello, and welcome back to the Security Metrics Podcast. My name is Jen Stone. I'm one of the principal security analysts here at Security Metrics, and here is Portland. We're at the PCI community meeting, uh, North America in Portland, Oregon right now, getting to talk to a lot of very interesting people in the industry. And today I'm really excited to get to talk to Simon Turner. Simon, please tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you're part of right now. Yeah, and thanks for the invite as well. I'm really excited to be here in Portland, especially in North America. Yeah, so I work for BT, so we're the carrier network for um, the UK. Mm-hmm. We also have a, a big customer base where we're selling mobile phones, broadband, different various products. Okay. So obviously my, my area is in, in payments. So is this British Telecom? Yes. Oh, that's massive. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And what you learn as well is that you think BT is a large carrier network until you come over to North America and realize that actually you've got some larger <laughs> carrier networks. But, but yes, we're one of the larger ones. Yeah, we have a lot going on in the U.S. for sure. Um, so w- one of the reasons that I was very interested in talking to you is that BT is a is a PPO. Yeah. And I thought maybe we should just talk, what is a PO? What is a PPO? What is what is BT's involvement as a PTO or yeah. PPO. Yeah, no, so, so I mean, I've been in PCI compliance since 2012 when I was introduced oh to it. Oh, my goodness, it. yeah. Um, I joined British Telecoms in um, 2016, I think it was. Okay. And uh, when I joined, so as far as I'm aware, we've always been a participating organization. Okay. Um, and obviously, the, the council have recognized the value of having merchants and organizations, yeah. you know, feeding back and giving input and trying to drive the standards. So they've come up with a new principal participating organization. Mm-hmm. Um, so they brought in multiple levels. So, you know, for for me, raising from a principal organization, sorry, from a prince, from a participating organization uh-huh. to a principal PO gives me that extra bit of input and feedback into the council and, and the way things work. I think that it makes it the standard better. And it also kind of brings um, more engagement into the whole process of how are we doing this security standard. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a lot of value in that. And so welcome as a PPO um, talking to me today, giving us a little insight into that. What made BT decide to join as a PPO? So as an organization, we have um, an objective to be seen, to be influenced in the standards and getting involved and engaging. Mm-hmm. Um, as an organization, we've got a vast array of people with different tech technologies and we've got a research center so we've actually got a lot to give and help the uh, industry as such right so that's really what drove us to do that so you know we've, we've been doing PCI since as far as I can find back um, uh-huh. I think uh, beta engaged since before the payment standard was engaged oh, wow. so it wasn't really a hard sell to the business mm-hmm. to uplift to a principal participating organization because we have more of an influence mm-hmm. and based on you know so we've got different payment channels contact centers various so we've got lots of experience and lots of knowledge and by going through the principal PO Uh I get that little bit of extra kind of influence and say in and trying to advise and guidance off experience because that's what the PPOs are all about right you know the council want to know um, what our experiences are and what our challenges are and where we see the future of payments going. So it's really just bringing all of that into a package and just, just sharing that knowledge. And I think large organizations like yours that do have a vast um, ar- array of experience in uh, cybersecurity topics, yeah. um, you have a lot to say. It's, it's not like, oh, we're, everybody has to fit this standard. You take your knowledge and you take your uh, experience and ability and, and help shape the future of payment standards based on what you're already trying to do, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and as an organization, so, you know, we've got a team of about 20 of us that look after PCI. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, every day is a different day and it's never boring because of the amount of different subjects we get. Yes. You know, so one day I might be reviewing a rock from a third party. Mm-hmm. We might be doing a third party risk assessment or I might have somebody come to me last minute on a Friday night and go, oh, Simon, we've developed this app and we want to do mobile payments. You know, what's the compliance requirements there? So, you know, this this is why, you know, for today and this week, one of the things I'm really keen on is learning all about mobile payments. So mm. we talk about tap to pay, tap to mobile, phone, okay. et cetera. Um, so it's just really, you know, bringing the experience and trying to understand what's going on, but also sharing the knowledge and background. We've got quite a large contact center mm-hmm. um, footfall. So we've got lots of different payment journeys. So really trying to understand where's the future of contact centers, for example, as well. 
So when we talked earlier, um, just kind of preparing for this, you you mentioned that there are some payment security topics that that you're especially interested in collaborating on yeah. a, as an organization. Uh, let me let me just I think I've got them here. Technology Guidance Group. Yep. So the TGG. Uh, the Roadmap Working Group. Yep, that's right. And the Special Interest Groups. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what Technology Guidance Group. What is that about and how are you involved there? So the technology guidance group is really about wh- where we see the um, the future of payments mm-hmm. based on what we see, you know, in and around us and payments and technology. So so, so things around the technology um, group are, you know, future of payments around where we th- see payments going for, you know, face-to-face channels, for example. Oh, okay. We talked a lot today at the community meeting mm-hmm. about um, mobile phone payments. Mm-hmm. So there was a, a chart shown on how cash is getting less and mm-hmm. we think that plastic has peaked as it was called on there okay. and we're seeing through covid a lot of people using tap to pay or mm-hmm. tap on mobile um, you know so for example bt we've got um, we sell the iphone mm-hmm. we have an offering for small merchants to buy the phone from us with a product and we will give them the ability to go and do small markets and pay mm-hmm. for example you know where you go to festivals right. like glastonbury for mm-hmm. example and you might be selling your 20 pounds bar of soap pulling someone else's example. Mm-hmm. So just really being able to say, well, where do we see that going in the future? Is it always going to be credit cards? And it's and it's probably not. It's no. probably going to be... Uh, um, so I, I remember when Tap to Pay first came out, yep. and it was just credit cards to Tap to Pay, and yep. that was one thing. And then tapping your phone, and everybody was nervous about, well, what is this a privacy issue? Is this a security issue? How do we know this is a good thing? But so many people are using it now. It's very, yeah. very common. And, and there was a chat earlier about EMVCO, how the council worked with the EMVCO standards in terms of, you know, for example, sometimes you get frustrated with tapping it near the, the payment terminal uh-huh. rather than on the payment terminal. Mm-hmm. So it's quite an interesting about the, the distances you can have, you know, and they're trying to make it so you don't have to tap it right on. You can have a five centimeter gap. Uh-huh. And then I think, well, actually, if my credit card's in my wallet, do I want someone to be able to walk <laughs> past me on the tube and get in close proximity? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, but no, it's really interesting. So, um, you know, being able to influence based on experience mm-hmm. and others. So, you know, we have third party service providers, so the big payment companies mm-hmm. who are involved as well, and they give their view from a service provider point of view and what yeah. the products and services might have been. And I like to think that I can take the industry experience from our organization Absolutely. and kind of relate that, you know, because we've got a big retail estate as well. So it's what oh, are our okay. retail customers doing? What do retailers a business actually mm-hmm. see the future being, you know, because we want seamless. Everybody talks about seamless, yeah. you know, frictionless payments. Mm-hmm. The easier it is to get the customer engaged yes. and pay for that device, the, the quicker they're out the door. You know? Well, and, and the less chance they're going to say, I just don't want to do this anymore. Correct, yeah. Well, that's um, that's an interesting group to be part of. But what about the roadmap working group? That seems like it kind of overlaps a little bit what we just were already talking about. Yeah, so that's all about looking at what standards we think we might be oh, needing. So okay. we're not there to prescribe what's in a standard, mm-hmm. but we'll look at the existing standards that are there and which ones we think are relevant or prevalent. Okay. And then also what standards we see in the future. So, you know, with upcoming technologies, is there something that might be needed? And, you know, we'll discuss and provide feedback on that. Okay, terrific. I'll bet you that AI is, is a part of that. Yeah, I mean, conversation uh, that seems to be the to- hot topic right now. It is right the hot now. topic, and it's been a while for around. It's been around for a while, yeah. but obviously, it's just do people know exactly what it is? And it's all in the you know in, in the papers and mm-hmm. you know on the websites, etc. But and how's it going to affect us? And how's it going to affect PCI standards? Yeah, I mean, I've not had personally enough time to research in it, but it is one of the things on my to do list when I have five minutes. So. I have a friend that um, often will send me, "Hey, I asked Chat GPT this thing. I'm like, How? When? When did you have time? Yeah." <laughs> No, exactly. So. Some people are very interested in it. Okay, so the third topic we um, kind of were interested in is special interest groups. So tell me a little bit more about what is the special interest groups part of PCI and, and how is BT involved in that? So special interest groups are there to help explain and focus on a particular topic. Mm-hmm. So one one area that I'm keen on is contact centers, for example, um, it, it's very easy to de-scope a contact center mm-hmm. by the use of third parties with something called DTMF masking. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to remember the masking, otherwise I get told off by technology guys because DTMF is a term and masking is the technology <laughs> that removes the payment data. Okay. <laughs> um, but, but really, when you start looking at the details, so um, what I'm working on at the moment is the segmentation and scoping stick. Uh-huh. 
um, and it really looks at the nitty gritty bits of exactly what is it we're looking for. So giving advice and guidance to um, merchants or service providers mm -hmm. or assessors or you know people to get more clarification. Um, and, and one thing, as we move from traditional on-prem to cloud services, mm -hmm. you ta start talking of VoIP services. Right. And you know, one thing that I'm – so at BT, we resell cloud contact systems. Uh -huh. um, and I have to assure the products we're selling to protect the customers and BT – um, you know, making sure we're not selling, mis-selling something. Right. And, you know, it comes down to core routing, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, remembering that on traditional on-prem, you've got the recorders and you've got the telephone yes. boxes in the buildings. Mm -hmm. Now they're in the cloud mm -hmm. and it's kind of how does that work? So, right. Who's protecting it? Uh, exactly. And how is it encrypted? Yeah. And, and just understanding that the end-to-end -end journey, you know, it's, it's VoIP and digital, so yeah. it should be in scope. Um, and there's things like the definition of a carrier. You know, this might cause, you know, problems cause problems in, in the industry because, you know, there is no real definition of a carrier. But my take on that is, you know, we're heavily regulated by industry, mm -hmm. by Ofcom in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, so the definition for me as a carrier is that, you know, you are regulated by Ofcom and you have to provide. So when you talk about core routing and technology, uh -huh. Is being able to understand, you know, where is that core routing and, and what's the scope? You mm -hmm. know, if you're using... Um, a big, yeah, you know, called Microsoft Azure, for example, they use Teams and they have compliances. You know, where, where, which AOC am I using, and right. how far back am I going, mm -hmm. and am I able to descope? Exactly. So those kind of things come out in the SIG and the special interest groups. So okay. you've got QSAs, you've got merchants, you've got service providers. Um, so we work over time to put the outline of mm -hmm. the topics, and then we come up with the detail. And then the council go away and they review it and they tweak it and then we have to review and approve and then it gets published. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's quite a long journey for those. And there's, yeah. there's lots of SIGs. There's SIGs on cryptography, cloud computing, um, software as a service, service providers, you know, like Qualys and Dynatrace offering security services, right. other brands available. So mm -hmm. it's really just, you know, giving advice and guidance. So quite a lot Excellent. of work and knowledge goes into those. Okay. And just to make sure I, I I'm understand exactly what you mean by large contact center. Is that what we call a call center yes. over here? Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure that I wasn't confusing it with other things. So um, you can use your weird words if you want to. Well, Simon, that's fine. I was, <laughs> I was reminded. So so when I came over and um, I went out for a drink and I went up to the bar and I ordered a, um, a Sprite. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, I ordered a lemonade. Oh. And then when the guy was making up the lemonade, I realized, of course, that it's – different in the you UK. didn't want a lemonade I didn't want you actually wanted a sprite, sprite. well I, and so i i spent a lot of time um living in different places so i've lived in the south of of uh, the u.s and i've lived in canada and uh, and so sometimes i'll be in a conversation with my kids and they just blank stare at me yeah. and i realize oh i used a word we don't use here so <laughs> yes. we all think we're, we're speaking english but uh, and I wonder if technology, if it makes it even more difficult sometimes, you know, when we I talk about things. I think we use a lot of acronyms, though, in our yeah. industry and technology as well, don't yeah. we? So, you know, especially when I recruit new members onto the team, you kind of almost want to point them to the... Do you remember the old telephone directories, the paper yes. things that you used to get? Yeah. <laughs> I it's certainly It's almost do. like a glossary of terms <laughs> for uh, the industry and, and PCI. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I do know what you mean. Well, excellent. So, okay, so uh, moving on to another way that uh, BT is involved. Um, is uh, the Board of Advisors. Yes. So very honored to be part of the Board of Advisors. Um, it's a, a two-year term, and it's people elected to represent. So there's, there's over 750 merchants out there, and mm -hmm. obviously you vote for people to go and represent your industry. So we're very fortunate that... Um, you know, in the telecommunications industry as a, as a as a merchant, we've been elected to come and, you know, represent those merchants on the on the board of advisors. Excellent. Um what is the what does the board of advisors do? So so the board of advisors is there really to give industry insight uh -huh. and perspectives on there. And there was a really good um, scenario used in one of the talks earlier as mm -hmm. well, where it was, you know, kind of the board of advisors is like the pit crew of a Formula One. I don't know if you're into Formula One, but you know, you've got the racers and sure, the guys I've, who do the I've designing. watched Formula One, yeah. Exactly. And then you've got the pit crew who do the changing of the tires. Mm -hmm. They really keep things going. So the analogy was that, you know, the board of advisors was kind of like the pit crew that oh, kind of, you know, help okay. and support the council in what they do because they've got a heavy workload. And, uh, yeah, you know, it, it gives us plenty of experience and ability to, to influence again. So really the principal participating organization and the board of advisors uh -huh. kind of just bring that neat package together mm -hmm. and we're there to support. So this is uh, – these community meetings are fantastic. Yes. And, you know, there's, there's always – I like going and talking to the different vendors. Um, I know some people are, you know, don't spend much time with that, but there's always something going on 
that that's interesting to find out about. The talks are fantastic. Yes. And then they have the um, the tech talks that are a, a little less formal than the ones on the stage. But so when you think about all of the things that you've seen and listened to and participated in, what what uh, what, what have you found most useful from being here? So this trip, it's all about the mobile payments we talked about yeah. because that's the way the business is going. So I've attended quite a few useful key, well, useful um, discussions mm -hmm. um, with people from Square, for example. And obviously we had EMV code talking about the whole ecosystem. Yeah. So for me, it was like a learning exercise. And, you know, through the council changing the way they are and having the ability to download these videos later on as well, mm -hmm. because you're busy learning the first time, aren't yeah. you? So, you know, you, you want to be able to go and review them later. So that's been one of the key elements. Um, I've caught up with a couple of vendors because we've got the new PCR requirements that are coming out, especially mm -hmm. for e-commerce. Yes. So I've been doing a lot of over the phone, you know, conference calls mm -hmm. with the various vendors. So it's been really good for networking. And then also just, you know, I used to be a QSA as well. Oh, so, terrific. So, you know, meeting other QSAs in the industry from different organizations and just catching up and seeing where they are. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the key things for me, especially this this time around, is to I'd like to try and at least make five new contacts mm -hmm. when I'm here and expand that network because you realize that we're in a really small industry. Yes. And having the ability to actually reach out to somebody in mm -hmm. a specific area when you need it is really useful. Yes. So through the board of advisors and the community meetings mm -hmm. and the various groups we meet up, then you know, it's just building that network of people and knowledge is is really there. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I, I love coming to the community meetings. Yeah, I, I agree. I think I feel very fortunate to be here and be part of this and, and uh, I'm grateful. Um, so uh, if people want to connect with you, hear more about what you have going on or or is there something we missed or just to, you know, wrap up any final thoughts on things? I, th I think my final thoughts would be, you know, Everybody should make an effort to come to the community meetings. Yeah. Um, and I like to talk, hence why I'm really thankful to be here with you today. Um, and then in Dublin for the community meeting yes. there, I've got two discussion panels that I'm joining in. Oh, wow. So I really love the opportunity to engage with the audience as well and give something back, especially based on industry, because you realize when you get to my age, you've actually got a lot to talk about. It's <laughs> and it's a good job they've got time limits because I could probably stand up there for a lot longer than I should do. Well, I'm going to have to make sure I schedule <laughs> recording around when you talk. I'd love to hear some of your points. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm quite happy for people to reach out over LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera, and come and speak to me. I encourage people to come and speak to me. And you know, if I talk too much, then either just walk away politely or just tell me <laughs> you've, you've had enough. So no, so thank, thank you very much for bringing me on today. I All really right. appreciate it. Thanks, Sammy. Cool. And we'll talk again. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. To watch more episodes of Security Metrics Podcast, click on the box on the left. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. See you on the slopes.